Hello and welcome back and uh, in this video we're going to be creating a segmented control uh, to allow user to choose between multiple segments or options. Now if you're looking to create a segmented control um, in Swift UI, you might use a bigger view, but uh, we can build custom segmented control by combining other Swift UI views as well. And that's what we are going to be doing here. So instead of using the bigger view, we're going to basically build a segmented control from scratch. Okay. So we're going to start with a simple enum, which will contain the uh, options or the segments. Okay. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to create an enum first, and this is going to be a course. And uh, we're going to make this enum string and uh, case attribute uh, conformance to string and uh, case attribute. So this uh, course is going to have like, you know, basically these are, these are uh, dev techie courses uh, and the categories for the courses that's what we are putting here and uh, uh, we are going to have like you know a string representation for each of the value in this enum the case iterable makes it possible for us to basically iterate over all the options okay so that's why case iterable so we're going to simply create a case for swift ui and the value for this one is going to be swift ui Similarly, we're going to create two more for iOS and UI kit. All right. Now, once we have uh, basically this uh, these uh, course options created, we are also going to select uh, different uh, colors. So we're going to provide a color property uh, depending upon which course has been selected. There is going to be a color prop color value that is going to be returned. OK, so for that reason, we're going to create a color property uh, and the type is going to be color. We're going to put a switch statement on self not the capital S, but the small s. So the difference between capital S self and small s self is this self is going to represent the object that you're going to create for the course. Okay, so it's basically the instance uh, self. Uh, that's what the small s refers to. And the capital S basically refers to the type uh, itself. So for example, if we had a static function um, or a static, a static method, in that case, it would have been self because we want to actually access that uh, static function or a static uh, property using the object, the type instance, uh, t sorry, uh, type value rather than the instance value. Okay. So we are interested in like, you know, uh, basically putting a uh, iterate like switch statement for the object, the instance that is created. For example, if it's created Swift UI, we want to get the Swift UI value and then we want to basically return a color for that value. Okay. So we're going to add missing, missing cases and uh, we're going to simply provide all the values so the for the color we're going to for swift ui we're going to return blue color okay for ios we're going to return pink color and for ui kit we're going to return orange color okay so now once the course object is created we can access the color property of the course object and get the color value out of it and that is basically going to be applied depending upon what kind of enum we have chosen okay all right for the content view uh, what we're going to do or the main uh, the segmented control view in this case what we're going to do is we'll start by creating a state property which will be initialized with a course from the enum that we just created okay so we are simply going to create an uh, a state property here and then next we will add a namespace type so we can basically apply match geometry effect when the selection moves from one segment to another okay so we're going to create at namespace all 
okay and uh, this is basically going to apply that match geometry effect and uh, inside the body property what we'll do is uh, we'll have a rounded rectangle which will show a swift ui a swift logo from sf symbol and we will change the color of the rounded rectangle based on the selected segment or selected option okay so we're simply going to uh, create a uh, a uh, like you know rounded rectangle here so let's wrap inside the navigation stack and uh, then we're going to create a v stack and inside the v stack we're going to create our rounded rectangle okay now we're going to set the corner radius for this guy as uh, 20 points all right and you can see that it's taking over the entire uh, entire available space uh, leaving the safe area so what we're going to do is uh, we're going to set a frame so we can actually define how much width and height uh, this guy is going to have so um, you're going to set the frame width and height and uh, width is going to be 200 height is going to be 200 so it's going to be a square and then we're going to set the foreground style so foreground style is going to be based on the selected item so selected item we're going to set reach out to the color and apply the gradient okay and uh, right now we have chosen basically the swift ui as the default value that's why our uh, blue color is shown up here okay now next thing we're going to do is that uh, we're going to drop a uh, shadow I'm gonna set the uh, radius for the shadow as two points, okay? So it's not, um, it's just uh, subtle. It's not like, you know, basically uh, more prominent, okay? So you can see the difference between 10. So you, you see like, you know, there's more uh, shadow that appears around and uh, two is more subtle, basically just around here, okay? All right, um, then we're gonna set the overlay and for the overlay, uh, we're gonna set the content and the content is going to be an image. And this image is gonna come out of the system name, so basically SF symbol, and we're gonna just type Swift for this one. Okay, now the image is too small, so let's go ahead and make it big. We can apply resizable property or a um, resizable modifier, or we can set it by using the font uh, modifier. So let's use the font modifier and uh, we're gonna set the system font of size 92 okay so close to 100 like you know basically because this is 200 by 200 um uh rounded, rounded rectangle okay now uh, now basically comes the part where we will put together our segmented control so let's go ahead and start with an h stack which will contain all the segments okay so right underneath the overlay uh, basically at the same level as the rounded rectangle we're going to create an h stack with spacing zero okay and uh, let's go ahead and close this parentheses right here and start a trailing closure and uh, now what we what we'll do is we'll create a text view for each entry in the enum by iterating over it and and we're going to use the for each view for that okay so we're going to use for each and we are going to iterate over all the courses okay so course dot and you see like you know this all cases that we have uh, this is basically possible because we are uh, we have made this enum conform to case iterable protocol now one of the other thing that i want to show is in this case we are using the type uh, to get all cases that means all cases is defined uh, at the um, at the type level which is the course level the enum level it's not an instance if you see here selected item is the instance of course okay so this is basically an object that we are creating but in this case we are creating a, a, a type um, and we are reaching out to a property that is defined at the type level so all cases are defined at the course uh, type level okay enum level now 
because uh, case retrieval um, uh, does not conform to identifiable protocol we can actually so we have to set an id to individually recognize each value okay so we can actually set the id uh, by saying like you know just reach out to the raw value and uh, that raw value is hashable because it is a string type and string type is hashable that means it will be able to create an id out of that okay so we get like you know id for each course value and uh, these values are going to be uh, like you know um, different for each uh, case anyways so uh, each entry for for each will be recognized individually now we get the access to the course here okay and uh, what we're going to do is we are going to display a text with the course dot raw value okay so what this will do is this will show us all the values uh, that are there all the raw values that are there for the course option all right now let's add some padding frame and foreground style to the text view okay so we're gonna add padding and uh, on the edges we're gonna say like you know it's gonna be a vertical um, padding on the vertical um, uh, vertical space so up and down okay and uh, then we're gonna set the frame and uh, we're gonna set only width as 100 points so it's gonna set the width for like you know the text view okay so they come apart and uh, next we are going to set the foreground style okay so foreground style and foreground style is gonna depend upon the selected item okay so when the item is selected and it is equal to the current iterated course the current course that we are looking at in that case uh, the color uh, that we want to apply for the foreground style is going to be white otherwise it is going to be primary okay so you're going to notice that the first one will disappear because the background color is white and basically the uh, the, the the foreground color is also white so now if we change the dark mode so let's go ahead and enable the dark scene all the options come back okay so now um, basically we have like uh, the text uh, getting formatted now to show the selected segment we will add a background modifier and show a capsule behind the text view that is selected and we will use match geometry effect uh, to basically transition from one selection to the next okay so what we're going to do is uh, let's go ahead and set this uh, as bold as well so whenever there is a selection uh, that has been made the selected item is going to have a bold text okay so we're going to say selected item equal equal course and whenever this condition satisfies then that particular text is going to be bold so you can see like swifty eye is kind of bolder uh, than these two okay so there's a subtle difference that you see here but uh yeah so that's what this uh, modifier is now doing okay now next thing what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a background okay this background is gonna have a trailing closure and this uh, trailing closure is basically going to host a Z stack. Inside the Z stack, what we want to do is we want to basically set a condition if the selected item is equal to the chorus. In that case, we want to basically show a capsule. All right, and then we're gonna have foreground style and the selected item is basically going to be the uh, the color that's gonna be defined for that capsule so you're gonna have the gradient okay so basically apply the same color for the uh, capsule as the uh, so as the selected items color okay so that's gonna be the foreground style so you can see the pill here is now colored okay now let's go and uh, turn off the override and you can see the value here as well 
So basically you can see the uh, Swift UI uh, being colored here. Now selection is not enabled yet, but we're gonna come, to, come to that like you know in a minute. Um, now what we want to do is uh, we're gonna at the Z stack level we're gonna add animation, and we're gonna say the animation is going to be a bouncy animation. Okay, the value is the value is gonna track is gonna be selected item. Okay, and uh, at the capsule level, we want to set the match geometry effect. Okay, so for the match geometry effect, you can simply apply the match geometry effect modifier, and it takes an ID. This ID is basically the ID that you created. Um, basic, sorry, this ID is a unique ID that you need to identify. So it can be anything. I'm gonna basically just set it to the same name as the selected item. Okay, as a string and the namespace is basically the namespace that you have created here because this is gonna tie uh, the animation up. So um, it's gonna be animation right here. So it's gonna tie basically the value to the match geometry. All right, now let's make sure that the content shape is rectangular. So during the hit testing, the entire view can respond to the test. So basically not only just the clicking on the text enables the uh, uh, basically enables or sets that uh, selected item, but anywhere around here, right? We need to make sure that this area is also tappable. So we can do that uh, by setting the content shape for this whole background. Okay, so what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna come to the background modifier level and we are going to set the content shape. Okay, and uh, content shape is gonna be a rectangle. Uh, we're gonna use the new modifier dot rect, which is gonna create a rectangle content shape. Let's go ahead and also apply on tap gesture here. And this on tap gesture is basically going to set the selected item and we're gonna set the selected item to the course that we have tapped on, okay? So let's go ahead and choose. And as you can see that not only, not only the text itself, uh, clicking on the text uh, changes the option, but also around, clicking around actually changes the option, okay? So this is what your content shape, um, this particular modifier is doing, okay? Um, now let's add some padding and background to the entire segmented control and uh, we'll just wrap this one up. Okay, so what we're gonna do is um, we're gonna, uh, this is on tap, this is uh, your for each and this is your h stack. Okay, so right outside the h stack, we're gonna add some padding. So we're gonna add padding around the H stack, okay? And then we're gonna set a background. And this background is going to be primary dot opacity 0 0.06. And we're gonna put this inside a capsule. So we're gonna use dot capsule. Okay, and uh, <clears throat> so you can see basically there is a subtle uh, background uh, that shows up here now. So we have like, you know, this uh, background that actually makes it look uh, like a proper segmented control. And uh, then we're gonna add some padding at the top as well. Okay, so that actually creates a little bit of a gap between like, you know, these two controls, all right? Uh, last but not the least, we wanna make sure that we have um, the navigation title. Okay, so that makes it uh, look like, you know, a proper view and there we have it. We have basically our custom segmented control and uh, it basically works for both uh, light scheme and the dark scheme. All right, okay, so uh, with that, we have reached the end of this video where you learned to build a custom uh, segmented control using match geometry and, and uh, animation. Okay. All right. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much.